Welcome to this press conference. My name is Lasenberg Christensen and I'm 100 name Exo World Steering Committee. So privileged to be here today and to present the results of this global IAU 100 name Exo World campaign. We are very pleased and honored also to be here at the Observatoire de Paris uh, for this announcement. In fact, we are in that exact same place that Benjamin um, by you was appointed president of the International Astronomical Union in 1919. It's a very historical uh, facility here, the Salle Cassini. At that time, Bayou was director of the Observatoire de Paris. Um, a warm welcome to everyone here in the room and also to those of you out there in your homes and your workplaces looking at this stream live on the internet. Don't forget that you can ask questions on Twitter by using the hashtag NameExoWorlds. Also, we are round about now releasing a press release on IAU.org. The International Astronomical Union is the world's largest um, body for astronomers. Its mission is to safeguard astronomy in all its aspects, and we are also the entity responsible for naming of astronomical objects, and it's of course in that capacity that we are here today. These years are very special for the science of exoplanets. Since uh, the first exoplanet was found in 1992, a lot has happened. The first exoplanet around a solar type star, a normal star, so to say, was in 1995. As some of you may know, this was the subject of this year's Nobel Prize uh, to Michel Mayor and Didier Kellos of the University of Geneva. Uh, they received it uh, in part. More than 4,000 exoplanets have been discovered and in fact a couple are found every day now and the number is doubling every two and a half years so it's in a sense a sort of astronomical parallel to Moore's law in computing. And this is the first time in history uh, that the IAU has been uh, able to involve naming committees um, on such a grand scale. 112 different countries have managed to set up national committees to name exoplanets and their host stars. And this is from huge countries, of course, like China and India, um, but also down to very small countries. Some of you may have heard of regions or countries like the Pitcairn Islands, and they have less than 50 inhabitants. They got together they named exoplanets, they voted on it. And this is, of course, very important in this year uh, where inclusion is even more important than before. As some of you will also know, this is the year of indigenous languages and we're very happy and proud to let you know that some of these names actually come from those indigenous uh, origins. We have a number of prominent speakers in our panel today and over the next uh, 30 minutes uh, they will give an introduction to this important topic. First of all, I'd like uh, the IU General Secretary, Teresa Lago, to give a welcome. I think you can, yeah. Good morning to everybody, the ones present in the room and the ones spread around the world. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy to, to be here at this session where we close uh, this uh, Name ExoWorlds project. This is a very interesting project because, as Lars just mentioned, it's a very inclusive one and it took many countries of many sizes also all around the world. Uh, of course, I want to congratulate the team that was behind the general 100-year celebration of IAU, and uh, Jorge, in particular, was the coordinator, also Lars, who was a prominent member of this team, and all the others that are not here, you did a tremendous job. Thank you very much. But uh, I also want to remind you that uh, this project in particular, and this is the second version of the project. Um, Thierry Momer, my previous, previous uh, ancestor, was uh, starting the first name, ExoWords, or a similar project. And then the, the last uh, 
uh, Piero, uh, the previous uh, general secretary, carried it on and, uh, you know, enlarged it, giving it this worldwide uh, different aspect. But I was saying that it's not just the team and my and the people who are behind it that is to be congratulated. I also want to congratulate one of the IAU offices, the Office of Astronomy for Outreach, which is a, um, a project uh, together with the IAU and the National Astronomical Observatory of Japan, because they were really crucial for this type of project. Um, two years ago, yes, two years ago, 19, uh, 20, 20, 2017, there were only like 20 or so national coordina outreach coordinators. And we gave to OEO, the office, the priority to set up a larger network and to make it active. And they worked very hard behind the scenes. And the success of this project and many other projects is also due to their work. So I want to congratulate the office in particular Behind, uh, besides the, you know, the higher U100 office, let's say. And, um, you know, this year has been very exciting. The year is coming to a end. And, um, of course, IAU 100 years was very active. But I can promise you that IAU 101 will be even more active. So, welcome and uh, uh, enjoy the, the secrets that uh, the next president, IEW president, is so well hidden from us. Thank you very much, Teresa. <laughs> Thank you. I, I just also want to mention one name which didn't so far come out, and that's Eric Memayek, who has been uh, fundamental in the work together with Alain to be vetting these names. It's a very big... Um, privilege, but also a big responsibility to be naming objects and uh, figuring out all these uh, uh, rules that we have put forth. Now I'd like to welcome uh, Jorge Rivero, who is the IU100 coordinator. As you uh, just heard, this project was under the one IU100 uh, project, which is slowly coming to an end. Jorge. Thank you very much. Very much. Just one second, I need to take this. So good morning, everybody, and hello to everyone following in their, in their houses. I know that there are some countries that are organizing live uh, streamings. Uh, I'm going to give you an overview of the uh, one centenary celebrations. I'm, I'm Jorge Rivero. I, I've been the, I'm the coordinator of, I had the pleasure of being the coordinator of this initiative, and I'm just going to give you an overview of, of this uh, initiative, just to put uh, a bit of the context of the Name Exo Worlds uh, project. It will be difficult to do that really uh, briefly, but I will, I will try my, my best. Uh, I think, uh, just to, to let you know, that this is a, a global project that the IIU wanted to celebrate uh, its uh, centenary with, uh, with a global celebration, following a bit the experience that IIU gained during the International Year of Astronomy in, in 2009. So we wanted to celebrate a full year of exciting activities with the motto, 100 years under one sky, just to uh, bring to the attention of the, of the general public the, the power of astronomy to bring people together, but, but also how the IAU has brought the, the astronomical community through, uh, together during the past uh, 100 years through international uh, cooperation. This is a big scale project, and just, just you, so you realize how, how the global scale, it's, uh, I can show you this map. We have uh, so far, are over 5,000 uh, activities registered in, in over 140 countries. This, this map shows a bit the coverage of the, of the different countries. And I think it's, inter it's interesting to see that this is a really uh, big effort, as, as mentioned before, not only from the IU 100 Secretariat, but I guess from the uh, Office of Astronomy Outreach that is in Japan. And this, is, this global reach has been possible through the extensive network we have of national outreach coordinators in, in over, a, and I think in 120 countries at the moment. So what's, what's, it's only possible to, to have this big reach thanks to, to those people. And as you see here, we have 
a big program of activities. We have 11 uh, global projects that we have implemented through the year, and the, the role of this person has been fundamental to reach out the local, the national communities, but also to encourage people to participate in the, in the activities. Most people that have organized activities under, under IU100, from these 5,000 activities I mentioned, most of them are people that had no connection with IIU. So this, this is, I think this is really interesting in the way that it shows that it's, it's a grassroots initiative that have had the attention of the, of the public. So I'm going to walk you briefly through, through, a cap, through several highlights of this, uh, of this global, global projects and just to show you how this has been like a, a year full of activities. So we started the year in January, in January 2019, with the 100 hours of astronomy. There were 100 hours straight of, of activities uh, in during, during a weekend of activities uh, around the world. There were star parties, uh, other type of talks, lectures. And what's, what's interesting, and this was like an activity to uh, make, uh, reactivate the community, uh, reach out to amateur astronomers and, and model in, in, in science, in astronomy. And we have, and, and we, we didn't focus just on that day, but then uh, we, we had activities during the, the whole year. Uh, in April, uh, just in the very first place that the IIU was uh, born in, in 1919, in the Palais Academies in, in Brussels, we had uh, our flagship event where we, uh, the different, I think 67 nationalities, people from 67 countries came, and, and we dis not discussed not only about the past century, but also what's coming ahead, what's the next uh, 100 years for, the, for astronomy, but also for the, for the, for the union. In May, we, we celebrated uh, an, inter an important milestone for science. It, it was the 100th anniversary of the solar e total solar eclipse that proved that Einstein was right, that the theory of general relativity uh, was uh, correct. There were uh, special celebrations in many countries. We had a program, the Einstein Schools, that work uh, with different schools around the world in the, just using gravity to, to let people think and communicate about, about science. We had many activities around those days and special celebrations in, in Principe and in, and in Sobral in Brazil where the, where the actual observations in 1919 happened. Another project that I would like to highlight as well is the Inspiring Stars exhibition that organize events around the world that reach out to underrepresented groups and especially help uh, to reach the gap between, between different communities and also uh, compile different resources, that, that different resources like tactile models or uh, sound, sound systems that, that can be used for, to get astronomy to everyone. So another important event during the summer was the, that was celebrated worldwide was the 50th anniversary of the moon landing. So this was one of the most exciting events and also the one that had more success, apart from name exo Worlds. We had events in over a thousand events in 128 countries. And I think it, it was the, 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 the single uh, event uh, or the event with more, most participation of more geographical reach under one, under one banner. So it was really exciting. There were many star parties during 20, 21st of July. There were activities with, uh, st with children, uh, lectures. So the, the, the astronomical community and also our network went, went, uh, went for it and organized many, many things. Another project that was really interesting was happened not long ago in November, the Astronomy Day in schools. Uh, we, we gave the opportunity to astronomers to visit schools, organize uh, organized hands of activities with children. It was a way of having this connection between astronomers and schools, teachers. Uh, at the same time, we were organizing with other projects, teacher trainings. So it's, it's something that was uh, also really, really important for us. And then, just to, uh, to finish, uh, here we are in the, at the end of the year, about to announce the results, about to talk about it. I'm not going to enter into details because my colleagues will do that about the project. But I, I think, uh, for me, it was really interesting to get involved because we can really connect with all the national coordinators to understand, even with looking at the results, uh, a bit of the culture of, of each country. So it's, it's, it's really an engaging, engaging project, and, and I hope, I hope that we can see it with, uh, with all the results. Just to finish, I'm, I'm 
this, all of this can only be possible thanks to the support of partners institutions around the world and the guidance of the IU100 steering committee, especially the, the chair of the committee, the, the IU president, Evina Bandisok, and also the, the guidance from uh, Pedro Russo. But I guess mo most important is the, the people that really made it happen, the national outreach networks, the amateur astronomers, teachers, and people that love the astronomy uh, too much and wanted to share it with us uh, and celebrate uh, all together under one sky. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jorge. So we are uh, getting to the uh, core of the subject matter now. And we have, in fact, the IU name ExoWorlds project manager, Eduardo Penteado, and he is connecting to us by video from Brazil. So while we're just switching over, uh, I want to maybe extend a personal thank you to Eduardo. I don't know how many emails um, he has been through with this project, but we're definitely talking four digits and uh, possibly even more than that. This is a very big thing, uh, and uh, he has been very active and all done uh, in a voluntary capacity as so many of us. So thank you, Eduardo, as we're patching you in. We can see you now on the screen. Do you hear us? Okay, so we, we are ready for you. If you could do a sound check, please. Okay, I can hear you. Thank you, Lars. Can you, can you all hear me as well? We hear you very well. Thank you, Eduardo. Okay, good. I think, uh, yeah, so I'm testing here the sound and let's see if I can share the screen with you guys. So just a moment. Okay, so I guess now it's working, right? Looks very good. And okay, so sorry for the delay. So uh, good morning again. Thank you very much, Les, for the introduction. Um, it's a uh, it's a great pleasure for me to to be here and take part in this. Uh, planets and it's a uh, post to start based on a theme. So in uh, there's a delay here. I still hope you can hear me. Sorry again. Okay. And uh, to continue, in 2015, 19 exowords were named after were named where people from all over the world uh, were invited to propose names directly to IAU. These proposed names were then put to a public vote, with the winners having the exowords named after them. And as part of the IAU 100 birthday celebrations, it was decided that we should have another NAMEX Awards project. But this time we wanted a bigger and more inclusive project. We, we wanted to include as many countries as possible, of course. And in particular, we wanted every country to be given the opportunity to name an award system uh, in their own national campaigns. We knew, of course, that this uh, project would be a significant challenge to all of us in the IAU and uh, also to the countries involved. 
but we felt that everyone would uh, benefit from having a truly global NAMEX Awards uh, project. And uh, in, in, in order to meet these challenges, the IU set up a steering committee made up of 12 distinguished astronomers from across the world. And the steering committee is responsible for overseeing the project, setting up the rules for the project, including the named rules, and ensuring that these rules are adhered to. A project manager, myself, was then assigned to run the project, and we set up the NAMEX Awards website with the details of uh, the competition, including all the IAU name rules, which uh, each country has, has to follow. And initially, we contacted all the IAU national outreach coordinators uh, in, in order to ask whether they would be interested in conducting a national campaign. Happily, most of them accepted the challenge and start their preparations promptly. Now, not all countries have an IAU national outreach coordinator, so we contacted other organizations and, and individuals from these countries in order to see if they would express an interest in organizing such a contest. And uh, to our delight, we received a number of expressions of, uh, of interest, increase even more the number of countries participating. So in each country, the IAU National Outreach Coordinator or responsible person was tasked with creating a national committee. For collecting name proposals and for developing the voting system. So they are also responsible for the promotion of the project. In, in the end, over 100, more than 110 countries organized national campaigns, making this a truly worldwide project. We have participating countries with a long and traditional expertise in astronomy and long-term association with the IAU, while we have other countries just starting to go down this path. So, uh, with so many countries participating in NAMEX Awards, we are confident that the profile of astronomy and science can be raised in many parts of the, the, the world. All, all national committees were tasked with sending the winning proposal from their voting, along with two other backup proposals, which could be used in case the winning proposal had an issue with it such as uh, not being compliant with the IAU naming rules. So in each proposal, uh, each proposal had the name of the exoplanet, the name of the star, and a common theme which linked the exoplanet to, to the star. So future exoplanets detected in the system can then be named based on this common theme. So, and the next speaker will provide more details about the ExoWord systems. The selected names will be regarded as official names. However, these names will not replace the scientific designations, which are widely used by professionals in astronomy, but can be used alongside them. We hope that the name ExoWord's name Worldwide. I do hope that in the future we may have another NAMEX Awards project, perhaps with the participation of even more and more people. It is actually incredible to think that over 100 countries managed to contact national contests in just a few months. So I must congratulate the national committees from each country 
for for their efforts and uh, many of them uh, some of them might be here now in this room and some of them might be watching us and to thank them for making the NEMEX Awards 2019 project a great success. And of course, I would also like to thank the NEMEX Awards Steering Committee for providing me this awesome and incredible opportunity to take part in this exciting and multicultural project. It's been a great pleasure to work with uh, this committee and with all the, our national contacts. So here finish, and I want to thank you all for, for your attention. Thank you very much. The astronomical part of uh, today's press conference. So Alain um, Le, Le Cavalier, the Exopla World Steering Committee, planets and stars that have been named. Good morning. Who's a uh, few minutes from now? Uh, for this uh, name of the world, uh, uh, IAU. Uh, the other co chair is uh, Eric Mamajek, and I uh, should say that he must be uh, uh, applauded for all the work uh, being done uh, in this committee uh, by Eric. And uh, we have also the help of uh, Guilherme Anglada Escudé uh, for. Uh, the work consisted of uh, selecting the new words to be named today. Uh, all this operation uh, started about uh, two years ago, a uh, few years before, in 2015, uh, thanks to Thierry Montmerle present here, we had the uh, occasion to name uh, Exo World, uh, and we named uh, a total of uh, 31 exo world. Uh, but as today, December 17th, uh, 2015, we know more than 4,000 exoplanets, 4,000 new worlds. And all these planets are orbiting in more than 3,000 ex ex exoplanetary systems. And uh, we are like uh, Christopher Columbus where he was, he was discovering a new world and he discovered new flowers, new animals, new trees. And uh, the, those people at that time had, the, uh, had to, take, to, to give names to these new worlds and new things they, they were discovering 400 years ago. Uh, today, we are discovering new worlds. And this is the responsibility of AAU to give the name of this new world. But today we have only 31 exoplanetary system for which, uh, uh, 31 exoplanet for which name has been given. And this is the purpose of this uh, operation, uh, which has been uh, imaginated by uh, Piero Benvenuti, uh, previous uh, uh, IAU General Secretary, who had the idea to give the opportunity to each country to give a name of a new world. When he told me, uh, Pierre Benvenuti told me about this idea, uh, I said, OK, we have to find uh, 100 exoplanets to be named. That should be not that difficult. Uh, you know, we know more than 4,000 exoplanets to have 100 exoplanets to be, a oh, little bit more than 100 exoplanets to be named should not be that difficult. But in fact, we, we inside the steering committee with Eric Mamajek and Guilhem uh, Anglada Escudé, we decided that we have to find the best system to be named and uh, that's the criteria we dis decided. First, we decided that planetary systems to be named must have a confirmed planet, meaning that it has been discovered for long enough that we are sure the planet is there. And uh, we, are, we have also decided that all the stars to be named should be visible with a small telescope so that everyone will give a name to a star and the planet orbiting the star will have the possibility to see the star in a small telescope. So this 
gave some constraints on the position of the star in the sky to be visible from the place of the country. And we decided also that all the planets should be about the same nature, so we decided to assign to each country a planet which is a gaseous planet, meaning a planet about one-tenth to ten times the mass of Jupiter. And for each system, there must be one single star and one single planet to be named with this process. So from that, we gave uh, assigned a planetary system, one star, one planet, to each country. And uh, this is the uh, difference between the latitude of the capital of the country and the position of the star in the sky. And you see that most of these, uh, about half of these are a di uh, difference of 30 to 40 degrees, meaning that the star will come at least to 30 degrees above the horizon and will be clearly visible for the country. And even for uh, about 20 countries, the star, which they will give a name, will be visible at the zenith. The star for which a name will be given are very various, have very various uh, properties. Uh, the distance range from uh, about 50 light years to slightly more than 1,000 light years, and their temperature makes them quite normal star, slightly uh, less hot than the sun or slightly hotter than the sun, but totally normal stars. The planet, which will be named today, are shown in this diagram where I plotted the orbital period versus the planet mass. And you see that the orbital period of the planet range from about a few days to a few years. And the mass, uh, as mentioned previously, are from one-tenth to ten times the mass of Jupiter. So this morning, the stars and planets named in the sky are those. You see here is a map of the full sky with a galactic plane of the Milky Way and the position of all the exoworlds which has been named in 2015. So there, there, there are 19 exoplanetary systems named this morning. When in a few minutes from now, there will be the announcement of new names. And here are the position on the sky of all the planetary system which will be named, and you see that they are all spread over the sky, all in all directions in the sky, in the galaxy, in the Milky Way, and uh, that's really showed you that all the stars which will be named are covering all the sky. We are sharing, all the country in the world are sharing the same sky, and they will share that way with this nice view of uh, like a Christmas tree uh, of, uh, of stars, which will be named in a few minutes from now. Thank you. Thanks, Alain. And then with no further ado, we go to the final point here. So, Announcing the new names of these stars and exoplanets, we have Deborah Elmegreen, the IU president-elect. PowerPoint is thinking, so. Great, thank you. Well, I'm delighted to share with you the names of some of the planets uh, and stars that have been named. I don't have uh, enough time to share all 114 systems with you, but I've selected a few from around the globe to give you an idea of the rich variety of different themes that people used. 
and I've just lost my PowerPoint. <laughs> the suspense continues. <laughs> Great, thank you. We'll try again. So these uh, stars represent uh, the areas around the world where I'll reveal the names. Of course, all 112 that have been named so far will be in the press release. And let's see. Okay, so there they are. I don't know why that skipped ahead. All right, since we're in Paris, I thought it was good to start with France as the first system. The theme is names of Gaulish deities associated with the sun, light, and fire. The star is Belenos which is the god of light, the sun, and health in Gaulish mythology. The exoplanet is Bellissima, the goddess of fire, notably of the hearth and metallurgy and glassworks. Burkina Faso has names associated with prominent rivers of Burkina Faso in local languages. The star is Mahoon, also called the Black Volta, which is the largest river in the region and plays an important role in the lives of the people in the areas, and appropriately, the star and planet are in the river constellation Eridanus. The exoplanet is Nakambi, also called the White Volta, which is the second largest river. In New Zealand, the theme is the Maori language terms for the names of plants and animals in symbiotic relationships that are native to New Zealand. The star is Karaka, a plant that produces a bright orange fleshy fruit. And the exoplanet is Kararu, a large bush pigeon. The Netherlands has names associated with the world-famous paintings by Dutch masters. Appropriately, the star is Sterenach, Starry Night by Van Gogh, and the exoplanet is Nachtvak, The Night Watch by Rembrandt. <laughs> Malaysia has names of gemstones associated with jewelry in the Malaysian language. The star is Intan, which means diamond, appropriate in alluding to the bright shine of, <coughs> of this star. <coughs> and the, Excuse me, the exoplanet is Baduri, which means opal, that alludes to the, the beauty and mystery of this exoplanet. Russia has names of geographic features associated with the Taberda region of the Caucasus Mountains. It has mountain forests rich in wildlife, including bears, and this system is in the Great Bear Constellation, Ursa Major. The star is Dombe, which is a resort area in the North Caucasus Mountains, enclosed by forests. And the exoplanet is Taberda, a mountain region, a mountain river in the region with very rapid flow, symbolizing the planet's very rapid rotation around the star. <laughs> China Nanjing has names of celestial deities uh, from ancient Chinese mythology. The star is Qi He, the goddess of the sun, and also represents the earliest astronomer and developer of calendars in ancient China. The exoplanet is Wang Shu, the goddess who drives for the moon and also represents the moon in Chinese mythology. <clears throat> the United States has names of rivers associated with the Bristol Bay watershed in Alaska, which is famous for the wild salmon, which sustained the local indigenous communities. The star is Nushagak, which is a regional river near Dillingham, Alaska. And the exoplanet is Mulchatna, a tributary of the Nushagak River. Canada has names of family members in the indigenous Cree language of Canada. The star is Nakawi, which is the word for mother, and the exoplanet is Awasis, the word for child. Andorra has names associated with prominent peaks and valleys of Andorra. The star is Arcalis, which is a famous peak where the th sun passes through a hole in the mountains twice a year. So this was used as a primitive calendar and reference point for early inhabitants. The exoplanet is Madrio, which means mother of the river, which is a glacial valley and river that is part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Azerbaijan has names associated with the works and life of the 12th century eminent poetess, Masatni Ganjavi of Ganja. So the star is Masati, one of the brightest stars in Azerbaijan poetry. The exoplanet is Ganja, which is the ancient capital of Azerbaijan. 
Puerto Rico has names of terms and deities associated with the heavens and atmosphere from the mythology of the indigenous Taino peoples of the Caribbean. The star is Koya, which is the name for star in the language of the Taino, and the exoplanet is Amatex, the god of wind. Finally, Bolivia has terms associated with the Guarani Cosmovision. The star is Tapicu, which means eternal path. It represents the Milky Way, through which the first inhabitants of the Earth arrived and could return. The exoplanet is Ivaga, which means paradise, for the Milky Way was known as the road to paradise. I'd like to thank our fantastic uh, exoplanet steering committee, led by Eric and Elaine and Eduardo and Jorge, and also all the committee members, and a special thanks to the, all the national committees who ran these terrific contests. Thank you all. Hi, I'm Madeline. Uh, I work in the IEU Secretariat, and we wanted to thank you again for coming. And we can open the floor up for questions now, if anyone has some questions. And if you could just state your name and your affiliation and after your, uh, your question. And we want to also remind you that people on Twitter or watching us on the live stream, uh, you can also ask questions using the hashtag NameExoWorlds. So are there any questions in this group? We have a, a question online here. Um, I can't see who it's from, but it says, when can we expect a new edition of Name Exoworlds? I think that might be a question for either Deborah or Teresa. I'm not sure. Well, uh, there has been discussions about this because this was such a successful project that uh, once we have the officials meeting, officers meeting in February, we may come out with a proposal. Thank you. So my name is Olainka from Nigeria, uh, Astronomers Without Borders. I noticed that all of the names suggested were um, existing names of something from certain countries and all of that. I was going to ask, would it not be a great idea if we let people invent like new names, you know, as opposed to naming the exoplanet after something that already existed? Yes, yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, we have some rules for the names we accepted. And uh, among the rules we decided was that the name should not be contrived, meaning that it should not be uh, invented names. Um, maybe we, at some point for the next one, we could accept uh, invented names, but uh, I'm not sure that uh, it should be should be done with a very careful, in a very careful way. Uh, we made a, a, a control a check of uh, the name which has been uh, decided by the different national committees. And uh, we must be extremely careful uh, of the ideas coming with the names and uh, we must be careful with uh, fact that all the names should be well understood in, for everyone uh, in a peaceful manner, for instance. So uh, maybe in the next one we could accept invented names, but uh, in this case we will have to define very strict rules to avoid a, any uh, spurious effect which could uh, be bad for the. We, we were extremely careful for the selection of the name we accepted. Uh, and uh, the rules uh, which has been given to all the national committees uh, have been followed by a very large majority of the national committees. But we faced some issues. We realized sometimes that the, 
names uh, and we inform the national committee that the names uh, should respect the, the rules and for this one, the rules what no invented names. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ali Lidari. I am Iraqi Knox. Uh, for the moment, we name uh, uh, one planet and one stars. Well, in the future, for example, if we found uh, another planet, uh, in case of Iraq, the planet's name is Babylonia. Future, we f if we found another planet, what we call it? Uh, uh, just we give it another uh, number, Babylonia 1, 2, 3, or or what we, how we deal with this uh, kind of stuff. Thank you. Yes. Um, among the rules for naming those planetary systems, meaning one star, one planet, among the rules was that the names should have the same theme. So as has been shown with a few examples you have seen today, all the star and planetary should share the same theme. So it will be compulsory for the new planet, which might be discovered in the same planetary system, to share, to be a name uh, with uh, that theme. So uh, we anticipated that probably new planet will be discovered around those stars, and we already fixed the rules for those uh, new planets to be discovered. Maybe I can add, it, it was interesting to see how some of the national committees were already, even on the selected names for the finalists, were already considering this in case there will be discoveries for new planets, because then they, they can add, uh, if there were new planets, similar with similar same. So in, in that sense, I think it's a really interesting uh, notion. We have another question uh, online here. So. Um, what was the most challenging aspect when selecting the names proposed when you were vetting them? Some questions were difficult, and this question is a difficult one. <laughs> uh, uh, what is the most, uh, the most difficult challenge? Mm. There were many challenges. Uh, uh, some of these was, for instance, when the theme was not easy to define, uh, when two different names was proposed, but the, the theme was difficult. And we we had also a big discussion on the, for instance, for the names proposed from monarch and uh, people who had some political or uh, religious or military activities. The rules excluded all the names with uh, anyone who had the political activities. And for some cases, it was really difficult to decide uh, if the proposed name uh, was breaking the rules or not. And uh, we had many, many discussions. I should mention here that Eric Mamajek did a wonderful check of all the proposals. You know, more than 100 proposals have been checked very carefully to anticipate any uh, difficulties which may come later. So we did as much as we can the, the checks, and uh, Eric Mamajek was really one of the cornerstones of the, this huge work. I'll, I'll just add that, oh, did you want to ask this? Okay. That um, all of the national committees submitted their first, second, and third choices uh, ranked by order of the voting. So in the majority of the cases, we were able to accept the first choices. Um, and as Elaine um, mentioned, um, after extensive checking of the names uh, to make sure they complied with the rules we had set up, sometimes we had to go to the second or even the third choice. That was rare. But in those cases, um, at least one member of the steering committee interacted with the national coordinators to let them understand what had happened and to make sure that they were really okay with the alternate choices. Just maybe one perspective from my side. So the, the rules said that we do not accept names which are primarily political or religious nature. 
And as it turns out, um, a lot of what happens on the earth which goes into history is actually of political or religious nature. So it is a very difficult challenge. And also we found that it, when we were vetting the names, there's a certain time aspect that the longer time passes, the more it kind of uh, maybe washes out the bad things and elevates the positive things. And it becomes more palatable to name things after um, these kinds of uh, figures in the past. Um, we do have one more question. Um, one is, uh, where can we find the results? And that's just to remind that on IAU.org there is a press release where you can see all the different uh, results from the 112 countries. Um, and then um, we have a, a question here um, from uh, Sitami. When will we get the official announcement uh, for the rest of the countries? And in fact, it is already out. It is on IAU.org. Um, someone wants to know what happened with country XYZ. So there are only 112 countries. There's, of course, a big chunk of countries that didn't get any exoplanets or any uh, stars named. What happened with those countries? And that's maybe one of the last questions we have time for. Ah, uh, oh, the, the, um there are a few countries uh, who didn't answer. But still, we have to insist on the big success. It's amazing that we successfully give names to stars on planets coming from more than 100 different countries. It's really amazing. So I should insist on that before saying that uh, it happened that few countries didn't succeed to, to attribute a name uh, it happens sometimes that the uh, national committee didn't answer to our request, and that most of the cases for the countries who didn't participate. It. And there are so maybe 90 or 95 percent of countries who didn't participate is simply because we didn't have uh, contact. Uh, we, were di we were not successful in contacting the national organization committee. Some countries also face uh, difficulties related to their uh, political or uh, geophysics uh, activities. So uh, sometimes for some countries it was difficult because of material difficulties. Very few, it happens that there are very few uh, for which we have still to decide. Uh, the, the result came to us quite late and it was difficult to be able to give a final decision by today. But for those very, very few countries, I'm uh, expecting to, I hope, we'll be able to uh, finalize the decision uh, by the coming weeks. I'd like to add that, that these uh, countries that named exoplanets were not all IAU members. We worked hard to go beyond that to look at all the UN countries and even those regions and countries that did not have um, a national organizing committee, the steering committee worked hard to find people who knew people in those countries. So we tried very hard to be as inclusive as possible. Thank you. And with that, I think we can conclude this press conference. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for watching out there. And uh, see you for an upcoming edition of this or some other activity at the IAU.